away that midpoint of squeeze. It's a standard bell curve. It doesn't happen too frequently unless you have very, very large groups. In the normal distribution, the mean, the median, and modal scores are equivalent. They're going to be exactly the same. Then we have skewed distributions. And skewed distributions happen when, when most scores are either high or low, with a small percentage of scores then being strung out in one direction away from the majority of scores. So a distribution is said to be positively skewed if the tail of the distribution points toward the upper end of the score continuum. The curve is said to be negatively skewed if the tail points to the lower end. Unfortunately, I can't draw this for you. But when you think about this, the bulge on a positively skewed curve is to the left. The bulge on a negatively skewed curve is to the right. The tail that I referred to refers to the longer area of decrease in frequency from the highest score report. Now, another, another statistic that can be generated is the statistic called skew, or the skew statistic. And the closer to zero, but falling within zero and, or, well, positive one to negative one, but the closer to zero, the more normal the distribution is. So if you have a distribution of 0.5, you've got a pretty normal distribution. 0.4 is even more normal. 0.7 is a little less normal, but it's normal nevertheless. So the closer to zero, the more normal. But if it falls within one, positive or negative, then we have a normal distribution. The skewed statistics say of 1.78 indicates that we have a positively skewed curve. A skew statistic of negative 1.78 indicates a negatively skewed curve. And then we have the concept of modality. Distributions are said to be multimodal if the scores tend to congregate around more than one point along the continuum. In other words, if you think of it as a, as a camel, the normal distribution would have one hump. If you think of it as a bimodal distribution or a multimodal distribution, and bimodal would have two humps. And then, of course, we have the very strange camel, the trimodal distribution, which will have three humps. Those are very rare. And even rarer than that is when the scores are evenly distributed across the entire continuum without any obvious clustering, and then the distribution is said to be rectangular. I have never seen data come out rectangularly skewed, or with a rectangular modality, pardon me. So far, what we've looked at is issues of how do you represent data and what does it look like. Now we're going to look at a couple of very important statistical concepts. First is the measure of central tendency. Um, and here we're talking principally about the mode, the median, and the mean. These are the three central indications, or the three main indications of central tendency. The mode is just simply the most frequently occurring score. So if you have a, a, a set of a data set that say is one three three four 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 five 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 six six seven seven eight eight, there are more fives. That's the mode. The median is the score that lies smack dab in the middle, the midpoint of the distribution, and therefore it divides the distribution into two equally large parts. You calculate by finding the midpoint in the distribution, not the average, because the arithmetic average is the mean of all recorded scores. The mean is that point that minimizes the collective distances of scores from that central point. Now, you can pretty well tell from mean, median, and mode whether how, how a, a curve is distributed. As we've said earlier, if they're all the same, you have a normal distribution. In a positively skewed curve, on the other hand, the mode will be the low score, the mean will be the high score, and the median will fall somewhere in between. It's not necessarily centrally in between, but it will fall somewhere in between. In a negatively skewed curve, we have just the opposite. The low score is going to be the mean. The mode 
will be the high score, and the median will fall in between. There are two alternative measures of central tendency. don't have a very much to do with educational research, and so I'm not going to discuss them at any great length, but at least I should tell you what they are. We have the geometric mean and the harmonic. Finally, we're going to look at measures of variability. And what variability does is it indicates the degree that scores differ from one another. And there are, there are two kinds of variability issues that we're going to look at here today. One is the range. And the range of a data set is simply uh, the simplest measure of variability. It's the difference between the lowest and the highest scores in any given distribution. You simply take the low score, subtract it from the high score, you get a number, that's the range. It's probably the easiest calculation in all of statistics as well. The two that we rely on, and they're really the same measure, are variance and standard deviation. And the standard deviation is really the easiest statistic to, to help you understand the, the variability of the data, the variance in this data, how spread apart is the data. When I say they're the same score, this is what I mean. The variance is the square of the standard deviation. And so therefore, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. It's simple. We're not going to even think about how do you calculate these scores. Uh, but what I will tell you is that, that in order to compute them, you need to find the sum of the squares of the mean of all data. And then you do some additional calculations. But what, what's key here is that what we're measuring is all data. We're not throwing out anything. The range throws things away, because we start at the low point and we end at the high point. And we only get one number. We only get one number with a standard deviation as well. But it's a number that helps us to understand how tight the data is. There are some additional scores that you might want to think about. They're called the z-score. Um, and those are standard scores. Standard scores are really the measure of, of data in standard deviations. And so the standard score, let's say you have a score of positive 0 .0, uh, say positive 0 .38. It means you're 38 hundredths away from the mean. Uh, the mean in z-scores would be zero. It's a measure of looking at data in a standard way. So you can look at all data, any data in terms of z-scores. And what you're looking at is, how does that data look as standard deviations? So what we've looked at in this set of this lecture has been descriptive univariate statistics, I'm giving you a definition of univariate. We've talked a little bit about frequency distributions, about graphing, about um, distributional shape, a little bit about central tendency, measures of central tendency, a little bit about variance and standard deviation or variability measures. Next time in lecture three, we're going to address the issues that that roam around some bivariate uh, statistics.